Hello and welcome back to another episode. Today we continue our death march towards Halloween with the story of my nan's haunted keys. Keys, in fact, very much like these. These are not my nan's haunted keys, but I saw these the other day in a charity shop and they are perfect in so much as they're the right size for me now as Nan's keys were back then. I would, would have been four, five, maybe six years old when I became truly obsessed with a, a set of keys uh, that, that hung in the kitchen above the toaster by the back door. Uh, they, they, were, they were large, they were on a big ring like this, they would jangle whenever uh, she, she, she picked them up. And sometimes the wind would you know, catch them just right as the back door opened and they would sort of jangle against the, uh, the, 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 the tiles of the kitchen, the ceramic. And I was just enamoured with them. I, I couldn't stop imagining what these keys might be for. And, and she noticed this and, and clearly, you know, as, as, as an archaeologist, uh, obsessions uh, and fixations with artefacts especially mysteries from history, uh, are, are simply just part of my personality. And she wanted, it seems, to feed that somewhat. So one day she just gave me the keys and uh, they were a set of three, not unlike this. And on the way home in the back of the car, I was beaming. I couldn't, I couldn't believe how lucky I was now to be able to, to start investigating these keys, to ponder them, to hold them, to, to imagine what, what secrets they might be keeping, what doors they might unlock, whether or not a treasure chest might be uh, in my near future, or perhaps uh, some other uh, hitherto forgotten realm that might be behind a gate unlocked by this key and this key alone it was it was a rich uh, a rich prospect imagining all the different possibilities and there was one very vivid idea that always came back to me it was the idea that 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 the one of the keys unlocked uh, a cellar door uh, and I, I don't think i could have put this into the right words as a kid but Ima remembering what I was imagining it was almost as though a house had been demolished and the cellar had remained and there were some steps that went down towards this door perhaps on the edge of an allotment or something you know where someone was growing their vegetables no one knew the door was there but if you sort of shifted some corrugated iron out of the way and you used the right lock and you sort of were able to get it in past the rust and use it and twist it against its will the door would open and inside there would be well i never quite got that far interestingly the, my, my imagination never really quite let me uh go in through the door i think in some ways the the mystery of the key was was uh was entertainment enough as it were so the keys were a rich and exciting prospect brimming with possibilities and uh, and just just the source the beginning the the start point for so many stories that i told myself as a child and th th this sort of combined actually with a, a desk that we got uh, at the time it was a new old desk i called it but it was an antique desk it wasn't a very good desk actually looking back at it but i loved the idea that this desk had key holes and i had a set of old keys and i remember writing a story uh, in uh, in early primary school um about my new old desk and trying to 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 explain to the teachers just how excited i was because within one of those drawers there could be a a gateway to a whole new realm you know and it was it, it, i think i was inspired a lot by we were reading um the secret garden in reception at the time and uh and also obviously the lion witch in the wardrobe as well you know is a, is a formative text for any any young child so the keys were just so exciting and they they started to not only go with me on trips but also they, they would they would be with me uh, at night i would rest them on the 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 the, the corner bed knob on the on the the, the bunk beds and they would just hook over the side and they wouldn't jangle much but they would be there and i would know, know that they were hanging there as i slept and 
it wasn't long before I started to have strange dreams. Um, I would start to dream initially of uh, a, a cold, dark room, sort of blue, almost like moonlight shining in through a, a, a cracked window or something. And this room was echoey and barren, with stone on the floor and on the walls. And that, that, that dream over time morphed into something else. Uh, I started to, to notice things in the room on subsequent nights. You know, I'd notice uh, furniture, perhaps, or uh, a chair here or there. And in one instance, I remember very, very vividly dreaming that there was a barrel in the corner of the room. And I had no idea what this barrel was for. But this, this happened to coincide with me getting lost in a furniture shop. And we were, I think we were looking for furniture or, or carpets or something. And it was the first time that I was lost from my parents. I, I got lost, I wandered off. And that, that was quite scary at the time. And that night, when, when I'd been refound and brought home, the, the barrel suddenly was no longer in the room but rather I was inside the barrel looking out looking up out of the barrel then the lid came on uh, over, over the, the, the top obscuring any even the moonlight any light coming in and then a small window opened in the side of the barrel and I could see my my parents peering in through the window and I was like mum dad you know I'm in the barrel I'm in the barrel help me please and they wouldn't, they wouldn't really be able to hear me. They'd be looking in, seemingly not seeing me. And this dream went on for weeks. I'd had this dream over and over and over again. And then it developed even further. Uh, I imagine that the, that the keys were used to... Uh, I never knew who did it in my dream. But I, I saw the keys go into a mechanism. And they were turned. And out of uh, uh, this elaborate sort of network of cogs uh, a, a, a mechanism was applied to the barrel and suddenly through all of the surfaces inside top bottom all of the sides spikes started to emerge and slowly but surely the barrel ticked into action and started to spin with me inside it uh, that that's one of the few dreams i woke up from screaming i mean i screamed the house down i was inconsolable and I was immediately convinced that the keys were somehow to blame. The, these keys had introduced me to that moonlit space. They had slowly furnished it over time in my dreams and eventually introduced me to the barrel where I was trapped and, and cursed to suffer that most terrible of fates, tumbling in that spiky hellscape uh, there was a red light as well in the dream almost like the barrel had been lit on fire and no matter how much my parents tried to calm me down and said that it's not real it didn't happen it's not real i was convinced that these keys were to blame obviously not the uh, experience of being lost for the first time in a furniture store that had no bearing on it it was the keys and uh, there was a, there was a, a little suggestion, I believe, from from my mum that maybe there was something to it. That perhaps one of these keys had, you know, had a, a well, what uh, what the ghost adventure team might call, a, you know, an attachment. Something had happened maybe in the past. And I remember that my, my dad saying, "Don't say that in front of the kid." <laughs> but um, uh, they, they eventually we had to bury them. I was so convinced that the keys were were wrong, you know, were evil. Uh, they were buried by the the shed, or what well, the garage leaned to in the house, and uh, and we never spoke of them again. And to my knowledge, they're still there um, by the garage, back in in our uh, our family home. And it's interesting. I've never felt compelled to go and find them again. But ever since that experience, I've always been interested in old keys, and I suppose what they represent. You know, the uh, uh, as I was saying, you know, the, clearly the the archaeology bug um, was with me from early on. But they represent uh, private moments, secret spaces, uh, the potential of, uh, for, for adventure, but also as well, actually, the 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 genuine truth that sometimes things are better off 
forgotten, locked away, uh, never to be seen again. Uh, the 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 keys just stayed with me, and when I saw these keys in a local charity shop, I simply had to have them because they're the right size and everything. Like I say, they are they're to scale for me today. Uh, they, they feel exactly like it did to have those keys in my hand as a kid. So there we have it, my nan's haunted keys. Uh, and who knows, maybe maybe they really were keys to a torture chamber back in the day. I, I, I doubt it, but it makes for a good story and hopefully you've enjoyed uh, today's story. And also as well, presumably I'm not alone. There must be other objects that, that, that have fascinated you perhaps uh, when you were growing up. And, and if you have similar stories, please do share them below. I'd love to read them because uh, but actually, I, I suppose a similar artifact for me was my dad's pipes as well. My dad's pipes and also his pipe cleaning implements. Um, I had this sort of this fascination with them. Um, and even now I have one of his pipes, even though I don't smoke, one of his pipes on my desk. Um, cause it's, yeah, it's quite helpful just to think with a pipe in your mouth. Anyway, the keys, the keys. And as uh, we approach Halloween, what better a thing for me to have in the office. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this has been fun as ever. Until next time, do take care. Bye-bye.